Hello all, it is Chuck Thunder, and we're back with another episode of the Let's Play series, except we're not going to play with Gonzo Rivera today. He's still busy sailing around the world in the circumnavigation quest. So, we are going to use Charles Thunder, my main, to show you the next major step of the game after you've done uh, a lot of leveling um, and circumnavigating and unlocking a lot of things. One of the things you might want to do when you finally get a good ship with a lot of cargo space and a lot of speed... Um, you might want to, to start Nanban. Now, Nanban is a form of trading that you will do with the uh, China and East Asian uh, areas. So, trading in this game works normally. You, you have ducats or ducats and you buy you buy uh, products, bring them someplace else, sell them for the profit. That's how it works. I mean, that would be like normal buying and selling how things work in the modern world. But in the, the game, Nanban functions a little bit differently. It functions more along the lines of how it used to function when you were bringing goods around the world in a time frame where money didn't have one currency to spend on. So ducats are a world currency in this game. You can buy and sell anything with ducats. You can't do that in the era of this time frame of the 16, 1700s. It just didn't work. You would have to bring goods from one place to another, and instead of getting money, because, you know, in China they may not use ducats, you trade for more goods, and you bring those goods back. And it's all based on the rarity and what they want. You know, if you brought them something they liked, then they would trade you what you wanted, and you bring it back, and then you could sell it for a profit back there. So that's kind of the idea of Nanban. So, in order to get started with Nanban, we need to do a little bit of research here. I have done some, and to the best of my knowledge, you have to have all of these per port, permits, port permits done that I had mentioned before, especially the East Asia port permit. And we need to do one step further in order to do the trading. Now, I don't know how far I'm going to get in today's video, but it's the first step at the very least of being able to start doing East Asian port trading is we need to bribe our city officials. So, there are four regions in East Asia, and that is Japan, Korea, South China, and Taiwan. You'll have to bribe city officials, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in each region to gain access to Nanban trade. Now, you could do this in one region at a time, but <coughs> if you're going to do South China, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, you got to go to the one major city in each of these regions to gain access. So, my map, if we look at the map here, I've already unlocked all these. Here's the cities in which that there are. There's Japan. Oh, this is, they're having different things. Um, here's Taiwan. And then this is China. Okay? So, the cities that you need to go to if you're doing South China is Macau, which we might do that because that's the closest. Uh, if we're going to do Taiwan, we need to go to Temusi, Temsui. If we're going to do Korea, we need to do Pohang. There it is. And if we're going to do Japan, we need to do Nagasaki, which is the lowest one here. And we need to go to these locations to uh, bribe our first city officials. Now, they require, in order to bribe the city officials so that we can gain access to being able to trade goods within the city, we need to bring local specialty good from our region. The general consensus after asking people around is to bring some good goods from London. The good that we're focused on from London is whiskey. You could bring wine, you could bring sherry, but whiskey is what I'm told is a very good product to sail around the world with and bring to South China or any of these regions to bribe the first city official. So we're going to go to Macau. I'm going to go there first. It says they're in a recession, actually, so you know what? Maybe I won't go there. And I'll explain recession in a little bit to the best of my ability, but we're going to avoid that, actually. We're going to go to we're going to go to Tamsui. It's not that far away from Macau. This could be our first goal. And I've already since gotten my whiskey. They say you should bring with you somewhere between two to 300 whiskey with you. What do you get here? And you'll need that per city. So in this case, I only have enough to really do one city. And I brought extra just in case that it's not good enough of a trade. Um, but I brought this with me. 
and uh, I'm going to check in to Sui uh, how this is going to work for them as a good way to uh, bribe the city official. So, sherry and glasswork are also good you could bring with you, but right now what I'm told, whiskey is the best. And once you go to a, uh, a city official, you can't gift different goods to bribe the uh, person, once you start bribing with whiskey, you gotta finish. You need to get the 1,000 bribing points all from one good. And then be careful of towns in recession status as the gifting effectiveness is reduced. So that's why I said we're gonna avoid going to Macau now because I think Macau is in a recession. So if it's in a recession, I don't want that to be the case. So we are gonna go sail. Now this is my other account, like I said, so I have my fast ship equipped at the moment. And we are going to head northwards. That's this way. And we are going to start heading towards Tamsui. Alright, so, like I said, this is the first stage. It's getting to here. I sailed all the way to Manila. Already. Okay, Richard Chester says, I am a pirate. Wish I am, but I am not. Okay. Filming a Let's Play video. For my YouTube channel. He's not even around anymore. Well, whatever. Congratulations. All right, so we're going to continue heading north. I'm not exactly sure where it is on the map in relation to Manila. Probably not that far. But we're going to head right up northward here. I want to say it's this little island. Yeah, there's Anping already, so that's where we're headed. I'm going to already also remove my uh, caution here. And we're going to go with emergency acceleration to go a little faster. Um... So yeah, my ship here is my faster sailing ship, and we're going to sail to these places. Now, I'm going to switch to a different ship when we start actually doing the trading, one that has more cargo space, because um, again, I want to be able to get as much as I can from these um, from these trade goods. Right now, I'm not going to get any trade goods, I'm bribing officials, <laughs> so I might have to make a second trip. Excuse me. <coughs> so... I have another ship here called my Thunder God ship. It's a big transport schooner. It's got 463 hull versus 335. So it's not much better, but um, I mean, this really is my bigger ship, but it's my it's my aide who's using it. So I already got that. And we have this happening. Dangerous area, guys. Dangerous area. Thank God we have. Amulet of Sons. I want to win this battle, though. No. Oh, yes, I won it as we ran out. Good, good, good. Because I had emergency acceleration on. I couldn't turn very good. So, be prepared for that kind of stuff to happen, because things like that can happen to anybody. Um, anyways, and beware of pirating, too. I mean, pirates, uh, we're, all, we're in a region where it, it, it's we could be attacked easily. Um, but, as of right now, I think we'll be okay for our general purposes. Okay, people don't tend to bother people when they're if they don't actually have goods. I don't know if people can see what we have, but they would try. And I didn't bring too much with me. Alright, so, back to what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted. Uh, so I have this new ship. This ship's my faster ship. Uh, gets quite a lot bit of speed because of the sails that I have on it, and I have emergency acceleration, and I have wave resistance, 
and it helps my aid grow faster. It has wind resistant mast. It has a lot of things that help me go faster. I don't even carry cannons with me, so that way I can go faster. Again, it's my fastest ship. I didn't say it was the fastest ship, but it's my fastest, and it gets these videos done a little bit faster. All right, so we're coming up on where we need to be. Angle myself a little bit better, and then back to emergency acceleration. Coming up on our city. All right, so once we get here, we're going to talk to the city official, and we're going to attempt to bribe him. Turning with emergency acceleration is very hard. I'll have to show you guys how to get some of these skills at some point. But right now, just for unlocking Nanban, you don't need to have all these skills in order to do this. You just need to you need to have some money and some time and a good, decent ship. All right, so we made it here. Now, I've been here already. Um, Nanban trade. After meeting set requirements, you will be able to perform Nanban trade, where you can trade goods from outside of East Asia with goods exclusively from East Asia in cities and towns located in East Asia. To start Nanban trade, you need to obtain permission by talking to a city official located in cities and towns in East Asia. Talk to a city official and select Nanban trade permit application. Give the enough. Give the enough amount. English. Give the amount of trade goods to the city official to satisfy the required gift points and then you will be granted permission to initiate tra trade in that cultural area. Once you've granted for Nanban trading, only city you can perform trading is the same city you obtained the permission from. However, as you meet some more conditions, you'll be able to perform trading in other cities with the same, within the same cultural area as well. Trade goods must be gifted all at once so uh, once to satisfy required gift points. Also, trade goods gifted have to be the, the same category. So I finished saying that before. So it's not the trade merchant we're going to. We need to find our city official. That's the port official. City official should be all the way over here in the corner. What are you selling? Korean stuff. Okay. Uh, I guess people are selling stuff here for us to bring back. I, I don't understand why. Maybe Korean goods sell good back here. I don't know. I have no idea. But you might be lucky enough to find somebody sitting by one of these city's officials, you know, trying to sell some of the goods that I'm carrying, like selling whiskey. Who knows? All right. Namban trade permit application. Oh, I have some rum on me too. Okay, so that would reach our, our situation, so we're not going to give that much. Let's give 300. More than enough. 200. 200 would do it. I think because they're in mid-festival, they are much more than likely to accept it. Wow. Okay, so I'm just playing around with this. It's pretty close. There we go. Now we got the 1,000 gift points. And I might have enough to do... I might not <laughs> have enough to do another city, but it, we could try. All right, so we'll try that. Hand over the gift, are you sure? Yes. Wonderful, counting next time as well. You can now trade with Taiwan. Check that out. Cool. We managed to do something special. All right, so that's the first thing. Now that we've done that, we can now probably go talk to our merchant. Once we've officially talked to him, and then we can do Namban trade. Whiskey is something they like. So that's something I could potentially trade. Now, before we do that, backstock information. Now, if I understand this correctly, and this is the next stage of this, 
but we have to bring goods with us now. So we have this at least one city official bribed. Bring some sort of goods to take to EA. Go to an EA port where you could trade that you've bribed already. And go to the market keeper and choose the trade button. Choose the cargo and push OK button. Choose. So that's the whole thing. That's the basics, right? So we already know how to buy valuable goods to bring there. Now understanding backstock. This is the important part. Whenever a good is traded to the EA city, its value decreases. Okay, we don't get this normally when we're playing with a regular system. I mean, yes, it does get affected, but it's affected in price. Here, it's just about what sort of value will you get in return for dropping off what you've dropped off. So, understanding what this school, what this location has uh, a backstock of, is going to tell you how much value you're going to receive for what it is. So, when this happens, we say back. So, whenever a good is traded to EA, its value decreases. So what we say here is that its backstock has increased. This means that there is more X or Y, whatever it is, available. So in our case, we're going to do, you know, alcohol-based. See how the backstock here was higher, and it's now being decreased? Okay, so we're about a mid-backstock. We're probably not going to get the greatest. So and there's also a little bit of information here that says there's supposedly a big festival on, on the northern coast. I bet... It's a good place to sell food and drinks. Alcohol, right? So that's kind of leading towards us to tell us that we probably get more back value for selling food and drinks. So as wine is used a lot, its backstock tends to be high sometimes, which means less EA goods for me. However, the game also has a counter mechanism, which will take its backstock to normal levels with time. So as we're seeing here, time is starting to reduce the backstock. If a player, if player ceases to start trading, then, you know, that's what causes the backstock to reduce. Uh, um, so, we want to choose goods that have low backstock. And if you want to find out what goods have a low backstock, you can talk to the Namban trade merchant in major European cities, and he'll tell you what the backstock is, just similar to this, in certain regions. So, in this case, it seems like alcohol wouldn't be terrible. Um, we could read some of the other ones. Food is probably the best. Now, I don't know what food would be good, but food is one of the better things to trade. Seasonings is always usually pretty good. Luxury goods right now are really high. And spices. People apparently bring spices a lot here. Medicines are really high in the back stock. Fibers are mid-level. Fabrics are relatively mid-level. Dyes are really low. Precious metals are pretty low. Ores are pretty low. Fragrances are pretty low. Precious stones are low. Livestock, arms, firearms. Firearms are high. Um, artwork, crafts, wares, and sundries. So, our situation here that we have with us is alcohol. Alcohol is okay to bring back. Not a terrible thing right now. I think I may end up being able to do this. Um, he'll print, you know, it's just kind of understanding what this graph means here. And this over here is our current level. If this is time going on, this is our current backstock level. So, also, understanding what is going on in the town helps. I don't know what festivals necessarily do, but we see the effect here going on. If it was a plague, you have different effects here going. So, we're just going to go ahead. If I got this generally correct, if whiskey ought to be good to trade. So we're going to see we get good stuff with us. All right, this is what we get to bring back with us for our stuff. Do I get to choose just one? Hmm. This is not something I'm familiar with. Okay, so here's a lot of these goods that I was telling you about. So 170-something whiskey is going to win me back these sort of things. I'm not sure what's going to be good. I have no idea what's good to bring back. I guess I could look this up just so I know. Actually, no, why then look it up? We just ask him out chat. What's a good good to bring back for man ban in Temsui? Sui? 
first time trading man ban I think I feel like deer skins one of those ones that I've brought back before antler work I guess or tin armor yes I did bribe People are going to hopefully give me some advice here. I feel like I've seen all Kiosang before because it's a luxury good. I've seen deer skin before. Um, I, you know, I don't know for sure. I can bring back Ty Galangal. Bribed. I then went to the merchant, saw the back stock for alcohol, was meh, but wanted to trade anyways. So I traded my whiskey and now I have a window with a bunch of items. Do I get them all or some or just one? I already bribed people. Now I'm trading with merchant. one so then which one should I choose the most I get is oyster shells Okay, well, people are just saying they been trading. Your first one's going to stink, and that's fine. If that's the case, I'm just going to bring back, like, a spice or something, or medicine. I honestly don't care. It's for a learning experience, guys. Learning experience. Thanks for help. We're going to go... We're going to go with, since I typically do spices, I'm going to go with oyster shells. <laughs> Swap the trade goods for oyster shells, yes. And I got a special thing from the region. All right, so there you go, guys. That's how you get items. Now that I have oyster shells, I should be able to... Oh. All right, well, there you go. So I can't even trade the other stuff that I have. So there isn't, like, a merchant here that you could do any sort of trading with. Basic. No, there isn't, so. Thank you. Jeez. All right. Now we're stocked up. And now we take our goods back with us. Guys, that's, that's it. <laughs> now, obviously, as you do this... You know, you can bring special goods. Like I said, you're going to talk to the Namban guy. Now, he won't even let me look at... Oh, there, Namban trade information. So now I can change the town and look. 
in these different regions. Now I can look at Japan and Nagasaki and see that alcohol would have probably been better to trade in Nagasaki. It's good to know. Because these are all low back stocks. But they have a status town status of normal. Now I don't know if that would have been better or worse. Um, what else can we check? We could have checked. We could have checked Korea. Cold damage. I hear struggling with cold weather damage from North American Gyosang. I thought it was difficult to get crops here, so they would take probably raw goods or food. Um, and then South China, they're in a recession. Business is rough. It's hard to move luxury items near the Changsa, so you'd want to bring other things with you. Uh, is there any place got the plague? No. Okay. And obviously, if they have the plague, you'd think that you'd probably bring, I don't know, something to feed them, you know, to help them feel better. And so there you have it, guys. That is Namban in a nutshell. What we're going to then do is now we're going to go all the way back to, you know, our homeland. And we are going to stock up on whiskey again and attempt to do it again. Now, this may not be worth even the slightest amount of trouble. I have no idea. Um, I did not come back with nearly enough goods, so I know where I'm going to go is I'm going to head I don't want to go this way. Uh, I'm go. I'm not going to be able to get enough of anything to worthwhile, so on my way back I'm going to stop and get spices in some other places. And so some people will just say spice trading is the way to go because you're guaranteed to make money. I mean there's no guarantee, but there's a better chance in some ways of what kind of goods you're going to receive. And so I'm going to try to unlock myself with trips to and from East Asia more and more whiskey. And it cost me a lot, actually, to come out here time-wise and everything. So this is why it's very important to measure out what's going to be useful to you and what's going to be reasonable for you to do this. Not everybody will it make sense to actually do this trip. Especially early on when you're not doing very well and you're not doing a lot of research with Namban. Um, you know, looking at the back stocks. But as we saw, whiskey was going to likely do better in Japan. So we're going to check what they say when we get down that way. Um, but it's possible that whiskey will be better in other locations. And that's going to be my focus for them. But, as you can see, this is a very time-consuming process, and if it's not worth your time, it may not be worth your money, and that's why spice trading might be a little bit more worth your while, because it's a little bit closer. Um, if you go with, like, a full boatload of pepper, you can make several million, from my experience, at least with these size boats, these size ships. But, if you get enough of it, I'm sure you can make lots, and the time investment might be a little bit less. I mean, considering if you are doing what I'm considering, or what I've been doing, for a regular spice trading, I would leave Seville with no no items, or I'd bring some items with me, nothing, al no alcohol and no pigs, trade them in Cairo when I get there, sell them, and then take the, uh, the Suez Canal to here, then go to Calicut, get pepper, and then when I get pepper, I'll stock up on pepper as much as I possibly can, and then I sail all the way back around the tip of Africa, back to Seville to sell, and in that process, I'll make several million ducats. But that's on a good day, you know. If you're trying to make lots and lots, you're going to want to do land band trading. And it's going to take some time and investment. And if you can get good at it, you can make lots of money. So if anybody has any questions about land band, uh, you know, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to give you the information that I've managed to gather. And I'll post a link to the guide that I've been using. Um... But Nanban is a very good way to make a lot of money if you're doing it right, and it takes a lot of time and investment to do so. And I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna commit to it with Charles Thunder. And this main is gonna be the only one that probably has access to it. So what I'll likely end up doing is I'll probably do another video when I come back uh, after I've done enough unlocking here. I'll probably do another video. Uh, showing you when I've like finally gotten some mastery of Namban with this character. Uh, as of right now, I don't have that that mastery. Uh, I'm just starting out for the first time. So, you know, it's an experience, guys. You know, it takes time to learn everything. I don't know everything. 
I've learned a lot about Namban just by doing this little overhaul that I've just done. I've never done it before until this video, and I'm glad you guys were here with me for, to do it. Uh, by the way, another major announcement to make, I have now 100 subscribers. That is something I never could have imagined has been the case. Now, I didn't start the episode, episode off saying that, but I want to thank everybody who has subscribed. It's been amazing having, you know, going through this ride when I first started with like, what, 10 to 15 subscribers and, you know, you guys watching and helping me out along the way and everything. It's been great. Um, I'm not trying to gloat and ask and say, like, oh, I'm the greatest. I have 100 subscribers and I'm trying to get 1,000 to keep on spreading the news. Of course, if I get there, how wonderful that would be. I have no idea that's ever going to happen. Thank goodness. I have no idea if that's ever going to happen, but thank you all for, for participating in this experience so far with me. Please, please, please like and subscribe and share this information with other people so that other people can learn the same things that I've learned and that I'm teaching to you guys. It's just such a great game, so long as you're willing to put the time and effort in. And it's been a glorious ride so far. Um, there's going to be more to learn, more to do, more to show. Maybe more so with Charles Thunder versus with Gonzo as he's finishing Sailing the World. Gonzo's not my main, but he's my next... My next main, he's the one that I've done the most with so far besides him, this guy here. So, thank you, uh, you know, for, for following along, everybody. It's been great. Thanks for watching.